to that one. So Joseph coming to fight Keep Wahid Omar yeah. through to the round of 16. Shaku Samed um, disqualified. So we'll get a lot more details on these in a bit there. But just for those of you who are joining us, a few things to discuss on the show today. We'll be dropping the Fantasy League code for this season's um, City um, FM Premier League Fantasy. Uh, we'll be dropping the code tonight. So just uh, hang in there for us. Ronaldo has been naughty on his Instagram. He says, the king plays on Sunday. After all the shenanigans. <laughs> What's what you know, <laughs> The king, please. No, me, 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 I, me, me, I'm not a United fan, so me, I don't care about the shenanigans. All I care about is that Baba will play football on Sunday. That one day, I'm happy. The king plays on the Sunday. The king plays on Sunday. But he <laughs> asked the question and he replied. Which one was this? That if you translate the question, the guy was asking if, um, asking when he will return to the team, something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, he yeah. says, the king plays on Sunday. Why you not have a preseason game against Rao Vallecano? Two, two games? Actually. Yeah, so Saturday, Atletico Madrid, Sunday, Rao Vallecano. Mm. The king plays against Rao Vallecano. Okay, great. Now, let, let's get into that because I was just about to get into transfers and whatnot. So, let, let me start off with you. So, so, I'll get Daniel's thoughts on this in a bit. But, quick thoughts on this. Ronaldo, first of all, um, agreeing to crunch talks. I, I I don't like the smile on your face. I will not. I'm taking this topic away from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but ask him. Ask him. No, why would you ask? Look, you ask look, look at the discrimination. <laughs> discrimination. I, I know. I don't even know this guy stands when it comes to Ronaldo. I don't even I've know why. I've not said anything. Why have you said anything? <laughs> 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 the, the insecurity of the CR7 fan base. I don't, I don't the like, insecurity you know, of the fan base. I didn't like the look on your face. <laughs> I, 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 and I don't like the look on your face now. Quick thought. He, 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 he came in midweek with his agent, um, had talks with Ten Hag, um, still insisted that he's leaving regardless of how it goes down. Well, it happens now that he says that he will play on Sunday. What do you make of all of this? Oh, I mean, I can understand him. He's Cristiano Ronaldo. He doesn't want to play in the Europa League. It doesn't matter how they got to the Europa League, but he doesn't want to play. <laughs> it doesn't matter how they got <laughs> he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to play in the Europa League, you know. But, I, I, I mean, I'm very disappointed. Um, if he really had family issues, because that's what they said. I mean, that's fair. Whatever, family issues. But if it's more so that he was just trying to engineer a move away, it would be very disappointing. It would be very disappointing. Why? Why is it disappointing that oh, he's trying to there's, there's, engineer a move away? There's a lack of professionalism there for me because you were part of the team last season. so Played his part. He played his part. And if his part wasn't enough, you have to carry the cup. Really? Oh, you have to carry the cup. I, me, for me, I personally, it doesn't, make, it doesn't matter who you are. Messi, mm, Ronaldo, mm, mm. Pele, Maradona... If the team fails and you are part of the team, you can't get up and blame your teammates okay. and basically throw them under the bus and say that hey, and what, what is going on here is not good enough for me. You are part of the team. You saw where the team was. You looked at the team and you signed. No one forced you to come to United. He was at Juventus. He thought Juventus weren't good enough, so he left. Mm. So the same way, when he comes, I would expect that there will be some sort of improvement yeah. or whatever. It didn't work out that way. But I think the good thing to do and the right thing to do is to help fix the situation because you came, there's a mess. And if you love the club as much as you claim, I think it's only right that you help them get back to where they should be. Mm-hmm. There's, that, there's that thing about, does he, because from what it looks like, he doesn't love the club, which is also okay, but I think my new fans should also advise themselves that he doesn't love them like they love him. So they should relax from ah. him because that's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Very interesting take on the Ronaldo issues there. Nathan, what do you have to say about the King plays on Sunday? I <laughs> <laughs> look, does it mean he stays? I don't know. I think that this Ronaldo bit will hang around for a while. Nobody, nobody can pick up Ronaldo. Let, let's be, you know, let's be I, I think I I, I think it, it will <laughs> a little freeze in this thing. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think that I think that it will it will hang around for a bit mm-hmm. before all of this blows over. Mm. Um because clearly whatever it is that Cristiano Ronaldo did, and you can understand what he was trying to do, get himself a move away from the club, play Champions League football. Because if you listen to the backstories, mm-hmm. the argument he's making, and it's a very interesting, simple, straightforward argument, it says, listen to me. I'm all, I'm very close to becoming probably all time Champions League scorer or whatever appearance. He is an all time Champions League top scorer. Not very close, you know. 
and Messi gets to play next season, that means that Messi gets close. Those are some of the funny stories I've heard, and he doesn't want that. I completely understand. The man loves his numbers. He loves his position in terms of where he is in world football, and he clearly doesn't want a season away from that competition because it's, it's never happened ever since he started playing at the highest level. Because once United played in the Champions League in the year 2005 in the qualifiers, from that point till Ronaldo left, they always played in the Champions yeah. League. And then when he went to Real Madrid, they always played in the Champions League. You get it? So, all this missing the Champions League for a season, it, I can understand what it does to his psyche, what it does mm-hmm. to his ego, what it does to his image <laughs> as, as, as Cristiano Ronaldo. So, I'm not too surprised at the turn of events. What surprised me was Man United's insistence that he was going nowhere. Because f- for the life of me, I thought United would say, you know what, let's get the man his move, let him go away. Mm-hmm. But United said, hell no. You are contracted to this club and you will play and we need you to play. That's the part that surprised me. Man United actually standing up for themselves and digging in and telling a player that you are not going anywhere. You have to see out your contract. And we had all, all the... All the scenarios, you know, some stories even said, George Mendes said, you know what, we'll give you guys an extension, we'll give you guys another year, but send Ronaldo out on loan. But the point is, if you look at the finances, how many clubs can Who's bear... Go to take him on loan. Yes, how many clubs can bear his wage? How many? You will take a pay cut. They call this on the unbearable no, weight no, of no, massive no, let's, let's let's even say Let's even say that, <laughs> let's even say that Ronaldo was willing to play for free, right? Who is taking Ronaldo? I'm saying... You have to oh, deal for free. There, yeah, someone will take him for free. Yes, but clearly he's not saying he will pay for. He's going to play for free. Mm. How many clubs can bear his wages? How many? PSG with all the amounts. Yeah, I think you should clearly, go to PSG. clearly told him. Clearly told his agent that we love Ronaldo. He will be fun to have around, but we don't have space for him now. Mm. And they were very honest. Man City clearly that ship has sailed. You get it. So for me, like I said, the most surprising bit is Man United digging in their heels and say, you are contracted to us, you are going to play, you are an important player, and he's an important player, whether you like it or not, if you mm-hmm. take away all the funny stuff, he can't press, he doesn't run, the man is a bloody good goal scoring machine, yeah. so clearly any team will need him, so I, I will have to wait and see, the Premier League starts next weekend, I'll have to wait and see, whether or not he has accepted that, he will play, or I think a very interesting conclusion here, United can agree to, is that, you know what, I'll play the Premier League games. Mm-hmm. Never ever play me in a Europa League game. I think that's a very sensible thing. Yeah, but why? Ah, but why? Ah, but why? Ah, why? Ah, why? Why? Why should you be playing those games? I need to no, tell my bell. No, I'm just saying. I think, look, I think Man United as and a club. He's under contract. I think, I think, he, I, I think he actually it. freaked out when he saw the Europa League people use Bruno Fernandez's <laughs> image for promo. And he was like, no way. This is not going to happen. And I'm saying that me. if it turns out he doesn't go anywhere. I think that's a very interesting conclusion here United can come to. I think that's very unfair to the fans in Slovenia no, 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 and Azerbaijan no, 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 no. and so and who want reason. to see Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm saying that. They will never if get a United chance like that in their him, lives. Yeah. If he says, okay, I can't go anywhere. I'll play this last year and then ride off into the sunset and go and play Champions League football elsewhere. I think United as a club, what they can do to just even the equation is, you know what? You play all the Premier League games. We will not field you in a Simple. Europe. Don't even come to Old Trafford in a Europa Simple. League. And so that the, cap- the cameras will capture and say, you were there. You were not there. <laughs> That's nice. Sports panorama. We have some visitors in the house. We have our representatives from the Africa Women's Sports Summit. Oh, Lady Balu is in the house, but she's acting like a landlady. She lie. <laughs> she lie. I mean, I mean, you are. Ca- sure. I mean, you are kind of a landlady because you are part of the DNA here. But still. No, yeah. no, no, she go no, talk no. because boys text me say they won't hear. She no. go talk. She Erica go. Ten Hag. You know they, what I these mean. Days, apparently, that's what they call her. <laughs> oh, we have Tats Moeng in the house. Did I get that name right? Tats. Tats. Oh, no, that, that's great. I suppose that's my new nickname. I'll take it back home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's Tato, but it's Tato. all good. Ah, it's all good. Tato. Yes. Tato Moeng. Yes. Love it. Love wow. It. You, you've heard all we've been saying about Ronaldo, the Premier League. What team do you support? Um, I've been talking to Erica Ten Hag about this for a while. <laughs> and um, 
for this season, I think I am going to keep myself a little bit out of football and football banter. Are you a Chelsea fan? This oh, gives me Chelsea vibes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's walking out of the studio. <laughs> Tato Moeng is a presenter with Super Sport. She's about to drop exactly the team she supports. I'm so, Chelsea. Come on, you know and, this. I, knew, I mean, come, I knew on, was come coming. on, come on, come on. I mean, good times, bad times, you need to be with a team, though. Um, You've got freedom of choice now. It's 2022. <laughs> it's Yo, 2022. No but, no, but honestly, this is something I'm noticing a lot of people do a lot. So you're not the first Chelsea person to tell me that you are yeah, either going to stay away for a season or find a new mm-hmm. team to support because, I mean, what's your problem with the team this season? Like this transfer with the team? There's, there's no problem that I have. I mean, currently what's happening at my team is unthinkable. You know, um, I don't know what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my owners are gone. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's a mess. So just like taking yeah. a mental break sometimes, you know, taking a sabbatical. Um, as Blues fans, we're allowed to take sabbaticals for a while. Uh, I'm not going to support any team, but just watch great Premier League football, watch other teams mm-hmm. do well. Um, I think Man United will do okay this season. Uh, but yeah, it's another season for Man City. Hmm. And another <laughs> season for Manchester City, that's what uh, Tato believes. Let me see if I can get more thoughts. Let's get into the world of transfers. And Sevilla and Barcelona and Chelsea have provided us oh, yeah, all yeah. the drama we need this week. Drama. I love it. I love it. So, um, just a few hours ago, Monchi, who happens to be sporting director yeah. of Sevilla. The greatest sporting director yeah. of all time. Charlie, he dropped a, a thread. <laughs> I, I think I, we have to take that title from him after what he did to Roma. They are still cleaning up that mess. <laughs> let's, 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 everybody is allowed one bad job. Oh, but... <laughs> well, <laughs> about 20 bar <laughs> transfers bar we can't, can't, well, can't let, let's just get more. into it so he <laughs> says that this week so contrary to what we all felt that Jules Kounde was slighting Chelsea to go mm. to Barcelona he says mm. that is not the situation and that Chelsea had agreed a deal with Jules Kounde they were in contact everything looked like it was going to happen Chelsea and then Chelsea finished. dropped the ball Chelsea just went AWOL they didn't hear from Chelsea again Barcelona apparently just made contact on monday and some way somehow managed to get this move over the line guys um one laporta has been talking a lot more i saw some quotes this week that really just shocked me so he says that he's had nagel's man complaining about taking Lewandowski away barcelona's conduct he says they should be happy and be smiling at their bank accounts because the <laughs> money has dropped <laughs> the Lewandowski <laughs> money has dropped and he says that we haven't seen anything yet he says that the splashing of the cash will go on. There's, there's, there's cash. cash. So you know, it, it, like this is the team that's actually showing there's cash. There's cash. So there's cash they don't have. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> that. that. But let me let me get Daniel's thoughts on that one quickly. Like, first of all, I mean Chelsea getting cold feet on that move. According to Monty, of course. Not we are not saying Monty says that Chelsea just froze out on the move and didn't follow through with it. I, I don't know how you feel about this. Um because we had already Christine Kokoti on the show last week. We said it was coming. <laughs> we said Kunde, okay, what Kuli was it? Bali and Tiago. Somebody says on text message <laughs> that Kokoti is being cut short. As to what he has written in that message, only eyes can see. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go in there and check it out for a bit. Look, just keep your messages coming. The thing is, look. When you when you read what Monchi said in the Sevilla thread, you can clearly see that maybe Chelsea had second thoughts on the um, about the transfer. Um, but what worries me is that when they came back, they didn't make a, a, a deal that matched Barcelona's um, offer, and that's a bit problematic. If you really want a player and you really want him in your camp, then you should go out and 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 and, and get him, especially considering the situation that they are in. It's not like he, um. Kunde will be a luxury signing or anything like that. They've lost Rudiger, they've lost Christiansen. Yeah. Um, their centre backs op- uh, options are very limited. It means they have to go out and they have to get quality defenders. So, when you agree a deal with with Sevilla for Kunde, I see no reason why you should you should back out and then return when another team comes in. So for me, Monchi's story is a bit iffy for me, and um, hmm. 
basically because of what we've seen Fabrizio tweet throughout. In fact, there was a point where Fabrizio said Sevilla and um, Chelsea had agreed a deal. Yeah. And it was Chelsea and Kunde's camp who couldn't reach an agreement. Mm-hmm. And Kunde's camp was basically waiting for... A lot of holes in the transfer a lot story. Of, exactly. So, for me, it's, it's, it's very funny. And I don't see why Chelsea would, would um, agree a deal yeah. and then back out and then come back again and, 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 and not match the transfer. So, I don't... I, personally, I don't believe Monchi's story. I, I, I don't believe it. Because, <laughs> no, it's true. Because if you've looked at that Sevilla, the Sevilla Twitter handle, yeah. they've been trying they've to... They've literally s- been trolling. Save face. Yeah. yeah. First, they were tro- sort of like cryptic messages trolling Chelsea or something like that. Then all of a sudden... Since when do you sell a player and you come and can explain why you sold a player to A and not B? You don't need to tell us why. So it's you are yeah. doing business. You've got your money. You go away. You don't need. Any, you don't owe anybody an explanation. For so for you to come and tell us this story and try and make Chelsea look like the bad team because their fans are angry. I don't personally. I don't believe Monchi. I I, I really don't believe. Just Monchi. just let's stay on the beat for me. Um, good signing for Barcelona. Does he start at Barcelona because it looks like they have a lot of centre backs or defenders now. No, v- very good signing. They've lost um, Langley to yeah. on, on loan Long to Tottenham. Gone to yeah, Tottenham, Tottenham yeah. Yeah. Spare. Yeah. Um, they look like they want to offload Umtiti as well. Umtiti is not... Nobody's buying Umtiti. <laughs> he fell the medical at America. So for him, yeah, it's a bit him. problematic. Um, you look at PK, he's on his last legs. He offers that experience, yes. But Kunde is like your modern-day centre-back. Um, he's a good passer. He's quick. He's strong. And he's already in the Spanish La Liga. He understands the system already. He understands the league, the culture. So... It, it, it helps. And honestly, what I've seen Javi do from January till now, mm-hmm. you can tell he knows exactly what his team needs. The sort of signings he's gone out to get. Um, the second half transformation of Barca in, in, in last season was largely due to some of the players he brought in. Um, like Obama Young, like um, Adama Traore when he played. You looked at Ferran Torres' um, influence. Um, all of a sudden, he gave... Um, the chance to Pedri and Javi and Co to come in and, and, and do their thing. So he knows he's he's looked at this team, he's diagnosed the problems, and he's getting players to to solve the problems. You look at his forward line right now; it is it, looking really good, and the Barcelona project is looking very good. So, so they are stacked right yeah. now. I, I think they will have a problem actually picking a front line, especially. I, 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 I I've seen that. Ansu Fati, um, um, <laughs> Ansu Fati, Rafinha, and Lewandowski. And Lewandowski. I, I think it was There's, in the game against Real Madrid. There can be Dembele, Dembele Fati, Fati. Um, Depa is still around. Yeah, so Fami Young is the mix. Yeah, Young in the mix. So yeah, look, you need quality. That is the thing. And if you look at the gap that Real Madrid set last season or the standard Real Madrid set last season, you really need to be a top quality side if you are going to um, upstage them this time around. So for me, um, I completely don't commit the Kunde deal. But um, I was in and out of the studio when you guys were blaspheming about Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can't let it slide. Are you kidding me right now? I, I, I can't let it slide. No, he says, no, the king, he says the king plays the on king Sunday. Plays yeah, the on king plays on Sunday. Play, how do you expect him to? He also a, plays on Thursday. <laughs> I've told you, so, so I've given you. They said the king also said, plays I've on given you, said, I've given you the perfect solution to that. No, to that I, I, I'm, I'm very upset. Do you know how much they love football in Slovenia and Azerbaijan and <laughs> This guy needs to behave himself. <laughs> I think it's, it's I think it's very unfair. He, he, he needs to, to behave himself. himself. Cristiano Ronaldo will not fly to Slovenia. As he will play the Europa League. His problem, league. Is, that, his his problem is, is that he's, he's, going, going, he's not going to Minsk. Neither is he going to Talinsk. Do you know what? Do you know what will happen? Do you know what will happen once Ronaldo touches that Europa League ball? That is fifteen years. 15 years gone down the drain. Mm. Our hard work will not be undone <laughs> by this touching this Europa <laughs> League. It, it will not happen. Yeah. It won't happen. Yeah, that's, been that's Ronaldo's biggest advocate over there. He's his nephew. Lionel Messi <laughs> for 15 nephew. consecutive years. Yeah. It's not going to go down the drain by him touching that Europa League. Boy. I guess it will all be down to Manchester United's poor campaign last season. I don't see how <laughs> you you ask a player to join you. Yeah. You present a project based on last season. United had finished third and then second. Yeah. You tell a player he's coming in, he can take you to the next level. He does everything that he can do by top scoring at 37. Mm-hmm. And then you drop down to sit in the league and then you tell him he should be part of a rebuild. You, how can you go from challenging, telling somebody they can challenge and then starting a rebuild in a space of 12 months? That is a team that is not serious. And for Ronaldo, he can't compromise. How can a 37-year-old um, sign up to be part of a three-year uh, 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 rebuild? And then, let, let me ask you this question. Mm-hmm. When Ronaldo is 40 and Man yeah. United is ready to compete for the title, do you think Man United will keep him in their books to be the guy leading the, the, the line nope. for? No, don't let him go. So he has to also have to look, for, for, uh, look, look out for himself. himself. And he needs to go. Well, Sporting Lisbon is, is available. 
Small thing Lisbon can't afford. <laughs> you take a pay cut. He knows where he's going. It's about playing in the Champions League. It's about retiring as the greatest ever player in the history of the UEFA Champions League, which he's already is. Yes, he already yes, is. No doubt. But he needs to that. cement that. Lovely. Let me get some thoughts. Let me get some thoughts quickly from Thato on the Kunde deal. I'm sure you were following that. I'm sure you were hoping it would happen. What about Lewandowski? You were, um, all the little Chelsea moves that were Chelsea were tracking. Rafinha, I mean, Rafinha. <laughs> Listen, like I said, this season is not happening. <laughs> it's really one of those things, like you're saying, where Chelsea make an offer, but then they get cold feet. Um, look, I'm really paying my attention a lot on women's football. I'm staying away from Chelsea. No, 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 no. Women's football is great. great. Yeah. Chelsea it's women really are doing great. very well. It's, it's honestly yeah. great. We just finished having, um, and you actually should be calling me champion as I walk in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only way. One ring of the bell for you. That's the only way. <laughs> I'm gonna get joy, so I choose yeah. my joy. You know, I, you know? I was I was watching Super Sport with Monday, the yeah. Tuesday, mm-hmm. and I noticed that they were still partying down in South Africa. Yeah, like, they were. Wow, no, no, the dance moves, the dance moves from the Bayana Bayana ladies at Goodness. the airport, crazy, crazy. Like, like I, I felt so. I, I was asking myself, so that's how it feels like to to win an Africa. Well, I, I, I've always China. said, like, I told you that like, winning, winning changes <laughs> you everything. Say I choose my joy. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm not going to make brilliant. myself. Why? <laughs> <laughs> no, myself brilliant. out. Nah. No. Quick, quick thoughts though. I mean, how, how are you finding Ghana so far? Ghana has been absolutely amazing. I am your new daughter. I am not leaving. You're going to have to keep me out of Ghana. We'll keep you here. You are literally going to have to drag me out of Ghana. It has been absolutely amazing. Uh, We had the African Women's Sports Summit, uh, which was absolutely excellent. Mm. It was wonderful. We had what the third edition. The third edition. Ring the bell for her. No, see, for those Eric, who don't know, Eric Atten, hi. See, the ringing of the bell here is the biggest honor we can give you on yes, the show. Sure. If, we <laughs> if, ever, ring, if we if we ring, ring the bell, bell on you, you that's you. it. That's it. You can. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, so yeah, we had the third summit. I was very honored to be invited. Mm. Um, there were the likes of Barbara Gonzalez, who is the CEO of Simba SC yeah. in Tanzania. We had Miss um, Na, who was also joining us, the mm-hmm. second lady yeah. of Ghana. Whew, what an honor! <laughs> <laughs> and then um, <laughs> Juliet Bewa, obviously, mm. uh, as the lady, host. Lady Balu, yes. Na, aka Erica, Erica Tenha. Ten I will okay. never again. A woman of many names. <laughs> I will never again. But it was absolutely fabulous to be in a room with other women in sports mm-hmm. not only in football rugby cricket and, and really just connecting and seeing how as women on the continent yeah. we actually have so much to talk about and so much we can do together um, challenges that are very similar from yeah. south west and east and northern africa um, but challenges that we need to be the change and make sure that um we change and we can't wait for handouts. We can't wait for other people to pay attention to women in sports and women's sports. I mean, I just basically said I'm not going to focus on the <laughs> Premier League and women's sports. And you guys all laughed. <laughs> that well, says a lot. No, not really. <laughs> not really. Not really, not really, not really but I'm joking, but yeah, do you but understand you know what, what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, there needs to come a point in time where um, we closing the pay gap. We're looking at women's football and uh, men's football as the mm-hmm. same. We don't want uh, women's football to be curtain raisers anymore for men's football. No, no, no. Um, you know, but a lot was discussed. A lot was said. Other than that, uh, today I went to Cape Coast. I'm so tired. Okay. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> <I'm extremely laughs> no, that's great. Tired. I mean, you need to see Cape Coast once you come down. Yeah, so, so I basically um, came back a few hours ago past starts and yeah. It was amazing. Um, Ghana is... So a, the castles, yes, Cape Coast Castle. I was emotionally taxing. Ah, it was emotionally taxing. The door taxing. of no return and all of that. It was emotionally taxing, but um, Ghana, you are a beaut. You are mm. a beaut. Thank you. Thank Absolutely thank you. wonderful. Have you eaten any Ghanaian food yet? <clears throat> I had jollof rice. <laughs> <laughs> So you can testify. So you can, uh, can testify, testify to the goodness. I had, uh, yes, I can testify jollof rice. Well, I haven't tasted Nigerian jollof rice. You don't need to. You don't have to. Thank you. I don't need to. It's fine. Um, so I had jollof rice. I've had tilapia. Um, that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I still need uh, Miss Eric Ten Hag here to, Erica, sorry, to take <laughs> me out for more. Yeah, so I, 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 I think Juliet needs to make sure you sample Wache. 
It's, mm-hmm. it's tomorrow's a Saturday, so, so some it's only it's only right that you have some watch it. Saturday morning. I've been looking at me weird like what is that? No, I'm curious. <laughs> okay, watch it. Yeah, you need to eat watch it, you need to eat some fufu and then you need to eat some banku if you can. So that would be that would be great. Th- then you, you know that like the whole Ghana trip has been full circle. So we'll be keeping tabs on that one. Just a quick one. Um, let me just quickly get to my message box and then we'll talk more transfers before we get into the community shield and the preview of the upcoming season. So this one here is from Kamal Dean uh, in the Upper West region or Upper East region. He says that I actually think Cristiano Ronaldo's thing would do a lot of harm to the spirit of the squad currently than good. Hope the coach is disciplined enough not to start him in the first three matches. Um, this one here from Farouk Headliner says that uh, we have we happily give 350k to Lukaku but we were reluctant to give Rudiger 250k and then prioritize other defenders over Kunde. I would do same if I was him. We honestly deserve anything. Don't deserve anything. Okay. Or we deserve everything that's coming at us in this transfer window. I don't think Rudiger was asking for 250k though. Rudiger was asking for 400k. That is how much he was asking for. Terry Atogbo from Ashie says that I'm here with a chilled bottle of Puka and some of coaches concussion concoction i think you want to say not concussion so we wish our athletes at the commonwealth games the best of luck can't wait for tomorrow's community shield moses kofi noy says that at long last the epl is back um next week about this time most guys will resume work <laughs> we mean betting <laughs> he says chelsea must win uh this evening's friendly match i've, n- I've never actually yeah. They are two nil up right now. Three nil up. up. Okay, so I actually have never seen people stay or keep up with preseason so much. I feel like this this season's preseason. Guys have actually stayed up to watch a lot of preseason matches. Crazy. This one here um, says (laughs) Friday without sports panorama is like watching an Indian movie without music and dance. (laughs) What? (laughs) Richard from Adenta Housing Down. This one says a club that won is broke and is struggling to pay players. Two, has lost its place in world football dominance. Three, looks ordinary. Four, struggles to compete. Five, has sold some rights just to survive. Six, is going through restructuring and yet still attracts world-class players who are willing to take a pay cut to play. Players choose this club regardless of the stated above. Now, I know what defines a big and great club. Answer is simple. Barcelona. Period. Okay. Uh, this one here is from Prince Henry. He says, I wish the Black Princesses the best, even though they lost their friendly today against France. Kudos to the entire Sports Panorama team for always updating us on the happenings in sports and around Ghana. Regards to BSB and Honorable Fifi Kweti. Okay, I'm sure they'll hear it. Um, Jude from Kakasu Naka says, Charlie, guys, my mind make me say today be Thursday. So I was on my way out around 6.50. Then I met my next door neighbor, my next door neighbor, Matthew, as well with some chilled Tamapuka combination on his porch. Who reminded me today is Friday night, and it only meant one thing: panorama. I rushed home with a cloud of dust behind me to grab my headset. So I want you guys to give a rapture shout out to this lifesaver tonight. I'm sure you're here, Matthew, Ezra. Big house to you wherever you are. Stubborn Academy from Kaswa <laughs> says, Charlie. Yeah, I like the names on the show. Stubborn Academy from Kaswa. He says the cocoa tea of last week. Has now Charlie is okay. You are is okay. <laughs> this this message will cause trouble. Ni from Dodoa. <laughs> I, I beg you, Mr. L, Mr. L, Mr. L. <laughs> so he says this so this government can be described as fire service approach government because they made two okay, I didn't think this is meant for us actually. Um Charlie Don Jazzy. A lot of things, a lot Don Jazzy has gone to carry eyewitness. Yeah, message. I don't even know what's going on <laughs> with us. Let me get to Juliet right now. <laughs> Oh, Erica, welcome, welcome, and welcome again. Thank you. Three, three welcomes and the bell rings. <laughs> Ring. at, at this point, we Ring. might as well bring your Tiana, uh, 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 bring your tiara and the throne. Let's talk quickly. Africa um, Women's Sports Summit third edition. Um, what's it been like organizing this a third time around? Because uh, COVID. Um, there's IMF lurking on our doorsteps. <laughs> there's a lot happening. You know, there's a lot happening in Ghana. Tato is looking at you like, what? I don't yeah. know. What are you talking there's, about? There's, there's, IMF? What? Yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. I mean, we, we keep it chill like nothing is going on. But there's a lot going on. H- how challenging has it been to organize this, bring all these wonderful women together? Because I'm sure that's a lot of work. 
Um, yeah, thank you very much and good evening to everyone listening. <laughs> well, it's it's been challenging. Um, the first edition that we had, it was challenging, but it wasn't um, that challenging because um, I have a great team mm-hmm. and um, they decided that let's do this together. We had um, a lot of support from the, my colleagues in the media, from everyone, like everyone came on board, so it was a bit... Um, easier second edition um, because of COVID, we had to re-strategize and go virtual um, because at the time we had uh, Madame Fatima Samura who was supposed to come to Ghana, but it didn't happen. But we needed to find yeah. another way to yeah. go about it because we have our women at heart. We want to do things better. We want to see the next um, Fatmas. We want to see the next um, Tattoos. Mm-hmm. We want to see the next Barbara. So um, the next um, Rosalind, um, Veronica Come and others, yeah. um, Eva Autry, etc. So we needed to still go ahead with that. Um, mm. We did that. We had a bit of um, boot camp um, okay. training that we had to bring in a lawyer Monday, Tamimu and um, others in. And then we said, okay, the first edition we said, take your place. Um, second edition, we had to shift a bit of mindset because you can't take your place and still have that same mindset. It doesn't work like that. And now we are saying um, you have to be the change that you want to see. Okay. Um, we realized that not too many women or some women shy away from leadership roles. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. why are we not getting ourselves ready for that leadership role? Because you need to be job ready. You need to be ready when that opportunity comes lurking. And um, we had to bring in the key players. And um, Barbara coming in, Tato, who um, she's been talking to a lot of um, change leaders on the continent and a lot of um, leaders yeah. reporting on them, etc. So we needed to find perspectives from um all angles and see how challenging it is. How do we even get in and how do we shape our mindset for that? So, yeah, um, it was it was great um, having all of them in one room um, with all the women in sports here in Ghana and some also joining across the world. Um, having our special guest speaker, Madam Samira Baumia, who um, she had even traveled and came mm-hmm. in like a day before, but yeah. she still said, I know I'm going to come this time, but I'll still turn up because um, uh, something like um, empowering women is very dear to her heart. So I want to say a big thank you to her and the, the team, Tamimo and um, others. I want to say a very big thank you from the African Women's Sports Summit team. So yeah, we are here now. It's challenging. I won't lie to you. I've not slept for <laughs> for months, months. I don't know when I'm going to get um, that now. rest. You know now. Um, ah, yeah, I know. Now you can get some sleep. World Cup awesome. coming in, everything coming, but I need to. Some if I'm taking some sort of leave. I'm going to take like two months. <laughs> 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 yeah, you know, you I was that. saying, Juliet, it was also nice to see uh, Madam Samira, who had travelled and come in to join us that yeah. morning, um, and had to leave early, but she stayed. Yeah, she she throughout. stayed throughout the whole. That was wonderful chat. So that says a lot towards yeah. um, the moves that we're making, the moves that Juliet is making, mm. and I really can't wait. Like I said that day, yeah, to see this Africa Women in Sports Summit go everywhere across the continent, mm-hmm. go across mm-hmm. the world, because it's definitely needed. We it's, need to be the change. It's a big deal. It's definitely yeah. a big deal. And I mean, I, I've loved every bit about it from the organization to the speakers and not, whatnot. But Tato, just quick, quick one from you. I mean, you've been in Ghana. You've interacted with Juliet. I'm sure you've heard a little bit about our women's football here. You've kept a little bit of an eye on our football teams here. I mean, just a word of advice for our women's teams or our women's football and even women who want to get involved in like the sports space. If you could just give them a word. I think, um, you know, at at some point in time, teams do go through challenges and not being able to, you have a Women's Africa Cup of Nations, you've got Nigeria, you've got, but you don't have Ghana. You know, that was also something that was a bit jarring. Mm -hmm. But um, Banyana Banyana have gone through the slump where five years in a row they were the bridesmaids and never really the bride and never won the title before. Mm -hmm. It's really just to dig in, keep strong and keep persevering. Um, I had also met... Um, the Olympic uh, weightlifter okay. at the Africa Women's Sports Summit. Okay. And that's something positive. You know, um, I know that she's been nominated for your local award, your local awards. Yeah. Um, there were women in netballing there as well. For more than anything, challenges are there, especially throughout the continent. But if we connect 
with our counterparts throughout the continent, I think we might just get better ideas. There were ladies in um, Ghana rugby asking me questions about um, how it works in South Africa. Uh, does women's rugby work? And I gave them examples of uh, teams in South Africa that are female rugby teams, yeah. Valka Union, where the rugby is on the rise in South Africa, you know. And I think if we connect more as sisters throughout the continent, sometimes we can inspire each other and help each other sort mm -hmm. out whatever problems we may have or encounter. Hmm. Just a quick word on the South African team. I just want to pick your mind on that. You said for, for the longest time they were the bridesmaids are always coming up short of actually the big thing. What switch did they have to make to, to make the jump up to this level? Because it is true, for the longest time, women's football, I believe, was dominated by Nigeria, Ghana, Cameroon to an extent. Yep. How did South Africa make the jump up to the elite division? So, um, in South Africa, I think women's football has always been around because you look at Desiree Ellis, who was our captain at some point in time. But women's football in South Africa doesn't, as most women's football on the continent, uh, get as much attention as men's football. The women have to work nine to five jobs and still be professional footballers. So it was a bit challenging. And um, what they've basically done is uh, try to get a team together. We had Vera Powell mm -hmm. um, as our coach before, and then they made sure that she also then worked with Desiree Ellis at the time. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a continuous run and form. Vera Powell, who also is still there to give advice to uh, Desiree Ellis, but um, I think it was continued hard work. Yeah. Um, and especially after the FIFA World Cup in 2019, mm. uh, where that's when we first went to the World Cup, yeah. we had new blood into the system, the likes of Tembi Katlana, uh, Linda mm. Mtolo. Mm. And those are all ladies who uh, played varsity football because at the time we didn't really have a league yeah. for women's football. So um, I think that turn has really seen their rise. And I can't wait to see what South Africa, Banyana Banyana, uh, Morocco, Zambia, and Nigeria actually do at the FIFA Women's World Cup next year, especially after watching uh, the European women uh, play. They are amazing. So, uh, <laughs> like, really, it makes me scared. You know, yeah. watching that was was wonderful. And to see the, the level of intensity, talent, technical and, and tactical brilliance of women's football was absolutely amazing. And dare I say, mm. it was a little bit more entertaining than <laughs> men's football. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Love that. Juliet, let me, let me just take the final word from you. Nathan? Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, okay. Tatsu something. So now that South Africa has finally crossed the Rubicon, you've won a women's AFCON, how do people feel about that? Do you, do you get a sense from the team, mm -hmm. the management, players do you get the sense that they they feel okay we've done it once can we win it a few more times oh yes <laughs> <laughs> definitely i was about to you know curse on air but yeah. yes and like i'm saying it is um growth that we've seen over the years fifa world cup now we've just won the very first uh wafcon title we're going to the world cup yet again it's only our second time at the world cup we have to do better we have to improve okay you know and all of a sudden now people are taking note to women's football in the country like wait a minute bafana bafana why couldn't you do this <laughs> you know? but it's not even to compare men and yeah. women's football but to say that these ladies under extreme dire circumstances have actually done it. And I think for more than anything, if even if you're not a football fan in South Africa, even if you're not a football fan on the continent, you have to take a look at this team and feel inspired somehow because it's the human spirit that showed tenacity to actually want to win and conquer something. Lovely. Lovely. Julia, you, you have the final word. Um, third summit successfully done. Your United suffering. Um, <laughs> No, I'm boxing it all in one. I'm just, I'm just summing everything up just to box it all in one. Just, just finish off for us. Just a word out there to the people. Um, I'd like to say thank you very much to everyone. Um, we're hoping that, like um, Tato said, we're hoping that next year we'll be crossing continent um, and it will even get bigger. Um, the dream is to have more women in sports, um, be it um, medicine, refereeing, Mm. sports journalist and everything so first of all we want to have an online learning um, platform platform okay. for these um, women so that we can 
enhance and also get them job ready. Mm. Also get them um, some internship placement into partner organizations. And thirdly, to try as much as possible to take some through school. And all this um, is very difficult for us because as a... You need funding for that You need that funding for, yep. for that. So we want to um, call on Corporate Ghana if... Um, if they are listening to us, I know they love football, so they are listening Ooh, to us. Definitely will listen to Panorama. <laughs> yes, so um, they can please come on board to help us so we get to realize the dreams of others. Um, so many people want to do this, but they don't mm. know how to do it. Or they don't even have, um, they feel, um, we can't get this done. You can get it done. There's nothing difficult. You just have to um, start off somewhere and yeah. just um, be very strategic about what you want to do. Do it and do it consistently. With mm. n- absolutely um, no, do I say no remorse? Mm, no hesitation. No hesitation. hesitation. Yeah. Yeah. Fear yeah. of failure. I F- think. Good fear of failure, and do it and just do it well, mm. and you definitely thrive. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think I think your team United could use this motivation. Oh. Ah, which team? What Sorry. do I know? So, which no, team? United. Oh, you're also migrating teams this season. No, you know, like we are still in the transfer <laughs> season. So when you're talking about teams, you need to be really specific because the transfer window hey. closes in August. Juventus and before already transferred. Well, you know, like teams are in Spain. We have some in um, Germany. We have some in I England. Believe, I so can't you believe have you to, you have to be really South Africa. You know, I can't, I can't, can't believe you are doing really, I can't believe you, you are doing really this. specific. We have teams in Zimbabwe, chicken in. I, I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Come on. I wanted to Pardon play some audio. <laughs> I wanted to play some audio. I'm trying to look for that particular. Okay, so I have it. Aha, please play for me. If you ask me that question, you know what I'm editing. I'm waiting. All of us are going to be chasing for this house. I'm not going to be able to ask. If 40 women are going to wear that TV for us, no, it's not going to work. I'm going to be chasing for us. They're not going to play good football. Yes. You guys didn't do this. Papa, don't be insulted. I said, Jesse, you're not going to play good football. Hey, Papa, play for me, Shalom. Did you hear that? He said he will remain back. Say Chelsea no sabi play good uh-huh, football, and then he will remain backer. Uh, <laughs> this was years. So ago. you know where you know where this season all the agenda is going, eh? I don't know. You tell I think, me. Yeah, uh, we we're just hoping that um, UEFA will just give us that pairing that we are hoping for. Which Chelsea one? Is it? Good. That's yeah. what we are hoping. I can't for. believe we are doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Juliet Bewa, Tato Moeng. Super sport presenter get into us. Yeah, speaking about that. Sorry, yeah. I almost forgot. Tomorrow, okay. tomorrow. Okay. What's up, Ghana? We're going to be out at um Juliet. Are we allowed to say this here? Are we allowed to? Well, I can say listen, it's DSTV. Fine. No, no, it's fine. I'm South African. I do <laughs> going to be out at DSTV Ghana tomorrow. Okay. Uh, running up the community show. Oh, yeah. So come through. Uh, everything starts at 4 p.m. I'll apologize later. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Talking over the community show, let's dig into it over here, guys. Let me read a few messages. Oh, let me take a quick break, actually. When we come back, we'll get into talk of that community show. City 97.3. Accra. A performance of sheer class. Uncommon speed. Terrific strength. Uncommon power. And how good was that? Uncommon skill. Becomes the common way. Life will be easy. You know, at day my office, where all my workers come see that they go bank. So I follow them. Can't see how they sit in the canteen. They laugh plenty. Everybody day them a phone talk. As I catch them, I shout, freeze. Where has them see? This be banking hall. Oh, boss. With the bank phone and phone stock. Oh. This your young phones. Oh, yes, boss. How you go fit bank for top? Even me self, I get high tech phone. I know they fit bank for top. You know something, boss. With Access Bank, even young phone safe. You go fit do mobile banking. Hey, you just for dial star 901 hash. Wow. That be all. You go fit open account, buy airtime, check your account's balance, mm-hmm. pay bills, move money from your mobile money wallet to your bank account. Then play it. That is. That'd be wonderful, man. <laughs> yes, boss. <laughs> Ah, boss. Yeah. I, I beg, what did they do? I did dial star 901 hash. <laughs> <laughs> we die finish. <laughs> no data, no problem. Just dial star 901 hash now and experience easy, safe, and secure mobile banking from Access Bank. Call toll free on 0800 004400 for more details. Access Bank. 
Best bank and customer service. Access bank. More than banking. City 97.3. Accra. Welcome back, Sports Panorama. Let's get into talk of that community show. Kickoff is at 4 p.m. Ghana time. Should be lit. We'll be here. Live radio analysis, live radio commentary. We'll bring you thoughts on all the statistics, the numbers that matter to it. Charlie, they say community show doesn't mean anything. But Liverpool and Manchester City don't see it that and way. The club sure. should start behaving himself. What's, what's going on? He likes that thing. What's going on? Have you not heard the comments? <laughs> yeah, if you win, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's complaining about the timing of the game. They should have been played at a later date. No, but, you, but you and I know these things are mind games. They'll score him. He knows they'll score him. That's why he's talking like that. These things are mind games. But seriously, I'm worried though. Why? That was Nunez. Sorry, oh, who knows? Oh, oh, worried they? about what? No, you see, gone are the days where players you like was allowed to give players some time to settle down and things like that i think with the state of the liverpool forward line Mm -hmm. they need him to start firing and firing as quickly as possible because money is gone jota is injured and luis diaz is not the most prolific he's more of like a provider so the goal scoring responsibility was on darwin nunez and salah yeah if darwin nunez is misfiring it means everything is on salah and it's going to be extremely difficult for him because look, we know this season there's no margin for error, absolutely no margin for error. If you are there and you are resting players and you are drawing games, somebody is winning six nil and they're getting a two point advantage over mm-hmm. you. Every single point counts. So he he really needs to settle as 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 quickly as possible. It's it's been very patchy. The first two games were not too good. Then he scored four, mm-hmm. but in the Salzburg game, I think the Salzburg game for me personally was the worst performance for him because yeah. Yeah. he's had he had had three appearances already that Klopp was the, game. the first two games they didn't count because he was getting his feet wet that is club then he got his feet wet and then he, he played four. again scored four and then the following game you go and face Salzburg and he was all over the place and you can tell he's not yet in sync with his teammates but yep. it, it it needs to happen as quickly as possible as <laughs> quickly as possible because if you watch the Man City so is it that you think the player himself is not up to the quality Liverpool estimates. No, 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 no. Or you think it is a mesh thing? You think it's a system when thing? The, when the transfer happened, look, I like him. He's a top quality striker. Mm. And I said mm. it here. Mm. He's a top quality. He will score. But I'm saying it needs to be fast-tracked. His, his integration... No time for team, warming there's, yourself yeah, there's, up now. There's really no... There's really... There's not much time. He, he needs to quickly, quickly um, integrate himself into this team. Because as for, as for the goal scoring, he knows, he knows how to find the back of the net. He's a very good goal scorer. His movement is good. It's just a system thing. And I'm, I'm sure Klopp will figure it out as, as quickly as possible. And he, the player, also needs to put in some... Yeah, because it's very back. weird when you go from playing with a guy who's like a false nine exactly. all of a sudden to, to a target now, one. Now, mm. yes, number nine. Can, can I ask Daniel a question? Go ahead. How many goals will, is the minimum you want to see from him in the league? I just want to get an yeah. idea of I where you're I have a minimum thinking. of what I want to see. How many goals was Manny averaging? I think Manny was doing like, let's say 15 on average. Oh, that you've give is a bit high. On average, probably closer to 12, 13. 12, 13. I think for his first season, and because of the type you think of player he is, will be okay I for think I think it will be okay because of the type of player he is. The Liverpool system in itself will have to change a bit, mm. and I still feel like Salah will be the main um, um, goal scorer for Liverpool. So for me, if twelve thirty above ten goals is, is enough for me for mm. his first. And I want to make a point on that. You know, I'm seeing a lot of people saying, you know, if Nunes doesn't score twenty goals, he's a flop because they paid a hundred million for him. And I want to check something. The number of times two players on the same team have scored 20 goals in mm-hmm. Premier League history is four. It's mm-hmm. happened exactly four times. Who are, who are we talking about? So this is Salah and Mane. Okay. Sturridge and Suarez. Oh, Charlie. I want to say Andy Cole and... Dwight York? Uh, Andy Cole and Peter Beardsley. Oh, I Newcastle. Think Newcastle. Oh. And there was one more I'm forgetting, but it's like four, you know. He scored 20 goals. 20 each. goals each. Mm-hmm. So usually you might it's, get it's, someone it's in their 20s and someone in their teens. So if... And think about it. Salah has only scored less than 20 once. That was the injury season that Liverpool finished for. He scored 19. Apart from that, 30, 20 something, 20 something. So he's a regular 20 se- goal a season player. Yeah. He's not going to now not score 20 goals a season after signing this new contract. It's not going to happen. 
So if we are being honest, if Dan Nunes scores 15 goals, he's probably done as well as I, he could I have. I think Dan Nunes can score. I, my target for him is 15 goals. I think he's yeah. able to score. And honestly, goals. I think if he scores 15 goals, he's probably done as well as he can do because there's one ball. How many chances are you going to get if Salah is taking the majority of their chances? We have to also consider that to be like we have to be fair to him. And I know people have this expectation because they played 100 million. But the person he's replacing last season scored 16. So even if he scores, let's say, 18 in your head, because they paid 100 million, you should score more. I don't know yeah, where this expectation the, even is the, coming even from. Even the 100 million for what? his age, the 100, 100 million is not for Texas. Million, it wasn't 100 million. It's, not, it's 100 million. It depends on the currency you're talking about. <laughs> when it's Man City, 100 million what? 100 million what? Exactly. Euros, euros. 100 million sheep or cows. If you add everything to pass 100 million euros and 100 million dollars, okay, like mm. 110 million dollars or something like that. But right now, the euro and the dollar are equal right now. Anyway, look, what 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 I feel is that look, even the price tag is not they didn't buy him for hundred million or whatever for him to come and score fifty goals next season in particular. No, he, no, he's no, a no. young player, he's one for the future. We all know Liverpool are building a team and trying to rejig that front line from Feminio Salah Mani. Two of them, in fact, Feminio is still in the team, but he's not necessarily going to be starting every game. We saw that in the past two seasons. So they are shifting um from that Salah Mani Feminio. Um, front three to something different and that's what i'm seeing with the type of player that darwin nunez is i think that the the how they play in that front three will, will change a bit it, it will most definitely change because you don't expect um darwin nunez to be doing what Feminio and manny were doing when we were playing down the middle he doesn't he he, he does he can't he can't i don't think he can do that or even if he can do that he can't do that as well as those two were, were, were doing it so liverpool will have to figure out something and i i trust club i always say that two managers who in modern day football that i know for a fact when they buy a player they, they know, know exactly how they, they are going it. to use him yeah. and they know exactly what they are doing is club and 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 pep and that's what i'm saying even the jack Grealish thing once he's not left man city just know for sure so Jack Grealish will definitely play a major will, role this he season. will come good i feel like i feel like Chelsea, i feel like manchester city are really sold sterling because of jack yes, Grealish. just to maybe create give, more yes, room for him i i i think the two teams are regenerating themselves they want to see what new dimensions yeah. they can present you know what what i will say about about darwin nunez mm-hmm. and and liverpool it, it, it kind of rem- it gives me a bit of the chelsea lukaku vibe not that he will fail but a team that now has to learn a different thing mm-hmm. and a player that, who has to learn something different so it will just be a very interesting learning process for the two things but i completely agree that now the margin or the window for learning is a little close but i don't think it should let Liverpool be worried. Okay. I think they have a team that can function. I think they have a team that can do well. Right? It's just sad that Diogo Jota is injured now because I think he would have borne a bit of the... No, a bit... A good part of the money burden mm-hmm. whilst allowing Darwin Nunez to grow and understand what it is that they want him to do. I think it's a fantastic acquisition. He will do his bit. It will take time. But I think once he understands what they want and once he understands this league, we'll, yeah. we'll see lots lots and lots of goals Let me just ask a question though. I find it strange that Ellen Haaland hasn't really scored much in preseason. How many games has he played? But he's not gotten as much flack. How many has he played? Two? He's three? played two. He's played two. He scored one. Yeah. He took 15 minutes to score against Bayern Munich. No, as for that boy, let's not talk about he'll score. If he talk, he'll score tomorrow. If you talk too much, he'll score. <laughs> that guy is... He, look, you know what I'm saying? No, he's different. We did this when somebody was coming to Who? Chelsea. We did this. Who? Timo Werner. And people said it was an like no, abomination. But, but, is he but, not? And, and is he? Like but Timo Werner was coming to, at the time. Ben. Timo Werner was coming uh-huh. to Chelsea. His manager was Frank Lampard. Let's forget about it. The Timo Werner we saw under his, Tuchel. Lamp, his manager is Tuchel now. Yes, but he's played much better under Tuchel than. than he, he, he says Tuchel. he wants to leave. Yeah, the fact that he wants to leave doesn't mean he wasn't a better player under Tuchel than. Will under you take Werner at United? Yes. Ah, are you kidding me? Over who? Ah, with all these. Have you seen United's front line? Wow. Timo Werner is better than Rashford. He is. It's a fact. Don't open your mouth. It is true. Timo Werner is a better player than Marcus Rashford. I don't know about that. In I don't know of, about in that. Terms of, in terms of everything. See, see, I don't know about that. that. Honestly. He's a honestly. And what has all his decision making done for him in two seasons? No, but, but, but Ben, to be fair, to be fair, you, have, for him you, have, to, you have to admit that a lot of his hard work has actually helped him coming. A lot system. of his hard work has mm-hmm. actually helped players like Kai Havertz and Co. find the goals the they have found. <laughs> and, and let's be honest, Timo Werner wow. has a tactical use that his pace and direct running stretches the defense. It makes space for others. 
Sometimes it's not everybody who is on the pitch who's a striker who's going to score. Hey, no. We are forever. Hey, it's true. No. It's the same thing that was happening with Bobby. I'm even surprised. You are all. That's the same thing that was happening with Bobby. Flo. Flo. See, oh, if, it's like if Bobby. Flo, Flo, see, if we do that, we are flipping the script. It, it, look, ben, I don't think so. Coming to Chelsea again, you see, if we go back, striker, pure in the purest form. If we go back to the premise that you were trying to build, yeah. If you compare Timo Werner yeah. and Erling Haaland, clearly between the two, we know who is built to score goals. Yes. No, but you see, guys, I'm, 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 and, I'm, I'm and not even trying to Werner and Leipzig had Yusuf Poulsen doing their hard work and Good. bullying and, them. See, I'm not and even trying to be... And there was I'm no one doing that. Let's be fair. Because there was no one doing that. I remember that. very much when um, when Werner was making them, I said that you, this you, guy you, has been... Yes, he has you been a goal scoring machine. You made a point. But see, it doesn't matter. You are coming to a new league. You are meeting new defenders. The defenders are very different from where you played. It's like... Nothing is look, the same. Okay, look, there, but then we have seen that you are right. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, strikers different. make the transition from other leagues and they've come in and they've survived. Luis Suarez made it. No, that's true. Are we saying that? Are we saying that? Are we saying that Ellen Haaland is so good that we cannot no, question no. his ability what, to make it? What we are saying is that first of all, you need to consider who he's what the team he's walking into. Okay. This team is a creative machine. The chances will be there. Okay. He will have opportunities to score. He will waste a, a few. He will waste a few. All strikers waste a few. He's a very good finisher. He top class score. finisher. He will score. He's playing under one of the best managers ever. Mm. He will score. Is it? Come on. How, how many goals will be acceptable or unacceptable for Haaland to let? Just, just so we are clear. How acceptable many? or unacceptable? Fifteen plus goals for me is guaranteed. He will guaranteed, score fifteen okay. plus. Goals. I have to say something about Ben. I think it's credit to him that he came to be the main man. It's not worked out, and he's reinvented himself to help the team. I think we should also give him credit for that because I, we, you are right. He came expecting to be the guy who's scoring 20, 25 goals a season. It's not worked out. But he's reinventing himself to make himself useful to the team. And trophies have come. So let's give Timo Werner his credit there. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm definitely a Timo Werner fan. I, I won't even lie to you. If Timo <laughs> you Werner was to Liverpool. Liverpool today, I'll take him. I, I won't even lie. I was just surprised by... The fact that Daniel thinks he's better than all the United front line. I mean, how, I, 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 no, I how, is, how is he not? How many? How is he? Has not? Rashford not outscored Timo Werner no, last Rashford, year? Rashford, Rashford, eh? okay, he's a ben. product of positive, powerful PR. Let's, let me ask, let's let's ask, ask you a question. Let's, 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 let's look at the actual. Let me ask you. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. If the two players were the only two left on the market and Liverpool had to buy a player, who would Liverpool buy? Oh I can't answer this question. Let's <laughs> move. Yeah, that's that's, just, fair, that's saying, a fair question. Hold because on. there are two different. No, no, no. I'm saying, no, no. You don't get it. No, he says live The up question up. I ask is a very straight. It's I always ask this very straightforward question. Straight question. I'm saying that if I understand, we are not saying Marcus Rashford is the worst player in the world. No, but clearly where Marcus Rashford is mm-hmm. and where in his mind he thinks he is, they are like worlds apart, and you can tell that for a player at his age, he hasn't one properly applied himself. Because at this level, there are certain things that are basic. All players we call elite players all do very basic things. They're things that come to them naturally. Yeah. Kevin De Bruyne never gets into a situation and he's now thinking, hey, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Or he doesn't see that at this point, I'm not supposed to run. Let yeah. me pause and pass. Marcus Rashford, as soon as he sees the green turf in front of him, it is all pace. Let's run. No nuance. No style. No time to you know, do different things and I feel that's the bit Daniel Cranston talks about the fact that at this elite level you are supposed to know how to make a good decision yeah. that when I stand here it makes sense when I move it doesn't when I run it doesn't make sense so let me slow it down sometimes and stop shooting from 50 meters because not all 50 meters yeah that kind of thing that, that's the point people have with Marcus Rashford the fact that there are no nuances to his decision making it's a lot of run shoot raw pace and really, none of that helps. Mm. I, mean, I I feel like we have to I have I want to defend Rashford here. I don't think there's been enough organization around. I've taken my headset off. I don't even want to. Do <laughs> no, I don't think I don't, I, I don't think there's there's been a lot of chaos around you, and it doesn't help a young player. You don't build good habits in chaos. It's there's a fact. Chaos. Do you know that Marcus Rashford is part of the chaos at Manchester United? Apparently, he's he's one of those untouchables who, you want whom you can't criticize. He's but let's talk about more um, new signings that we are likely to see in the community. So let's talk about Julian Alvarez. I don't think a lot has been said mm, about him. Um, so, so let, let me start off with you on that one. Who is this guy? I mean, for those who are listening to us for the first time who haven't watched Manchester City play, what are you getting in a guy 
like Julian Alvarez. So from what you know, the reports say, this was a guy who was doing very well in Argentina. He's been playing for the national team actually. He has a few caps. I mean, he was very good for River Plate. He could play on the right. He could play through the middle. He had a good Copa Libertadores game. He scored six goals for um, River Plate. So there's some quality there. It's not like he's someone. And he is very good at dropping deep. So he's actually more in the Man City style than Haaland. If you look at them stylistically, you say Alvarez is their style fit, but Haaland is more of their star power, elite level fit. You know, it's an interesting one. So I think Alvarez is a good foil and he's a good tactical option in the sense that... Has he replaced Gabriel Jesus kind of? Yes, he has that Gabriel Jesus vibe. Because is he an upgrade? That one I doubt. You know, mm. I can't... It's making the jump from... Argent- and if you okay. pay attention to South American football, you realize right now the Argentinian league is falling far behind the Brazilian league. Yep. There's a big gap and the gap is growing. So, Argentinian football is not in a good place. So, making the step up is what I'm afraid of. I think he can be a good backup, but he, I don't think he was ready to make the step up as a start. I think as of now, his suit is still ahead. But whether that will be the same maybe in two, three years is what we have to be thinking I, about. I, you know, I we're, think... We're talking mm-hmm. about Man City and... I just can't help and I could be wrong guys but does any other person feel that Man City have a certain lightweight feel about them they do Heading? yeah they I do. don't think so you see it's I, it, I, I, it's, I, it's, think so. I, I think it's more perception but it's also it's, it's not something I haven't thought about if I'm being honest with you I feel like this whole rebuild they are on with all these new additions and guys from last season <laughs> he's trying to build like, like we said Kevin De Bruyne is literally the only person left from the players I mean, stepping also rebuilding is done. So, I, just, I just feel that and just I, I could be wrong exactly. but when I think about Man City I just can't shake off that feeling that says no Aguero are, no they, Sterling they are, no, oh, I, 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 feel like is gone. Yeah, I, I feel that they are a little lightweight and maybe look how, how do you look at this first mm. of all ask yourself how many how important was Sterling to their season last season Last season, you could clearly see that they were slowly phasing him out of the team. Mm-hmm. Scored, had, I, I think he scored 50, yeah, 50 okay, goals or more yeah, okay. all, all yeah. competitions. That, that, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's a lot. You look at how much uh, impact Foden had on the team in terms of game time. I yes. always forget about him. Foden is around. You look at the fact that the Grealish will have more of yes. an impact this yeah. season. They've added Alvarez. They've added um, Haaland. Erling Haaland. So they've lost two attackers. And then they added a goalkeeper, got, actually. Yeah, they've, and they've really added a goalkeeper. So they lost a goalkeeper they've replaced him. They've lost two attackers. They've replaced them. In Gabriel, he's they've replaced Fernandinho's old legs with exactly. Calvin Phillips. With Calvin yeah, Phillips. I, I, so oh, we keep so, forgetting yeah. about Calvin Phillips. So they've done, they've done some good business. And I always say this thing. Look, Man City is a machine. Manchester City is a you machine. You mean it's plug and play? Oh, come on. It's a machine. We are sitting here <laughs> talking about how, and we are screaming at how much uh, Grealish flopped last. They still won the league. They still won. And you see, you can't take the fact that, we, uh, the, the, the fact that winning the league, you, you can't tell me winning the league is not an achievement anymore for Manchester City. It is the Premier yes. League. Once you, you feel Premier League is the best league in the world, and they consistently keep on winning it whether they sign players or not and then they are doing something we can't just say they won the league the amount of points they got yes if you get in the 90s I used to, until Man City came to the league nobody was getting, really doing 90, 90 it was record it was, was an like, anomaly it was an anomaly yeah. what yeah. Asta, I think Chelsea did 90, 90, 90, 95 95 Chelsea did 90, Asta Asta did 90, 90. So, Man United did 93 so if you got 90 and even when they were playing 24 teams 48 46 games teams weren't getting 90 yeah. it wasn't happening then so getting 90 is an achievement and Pep has done it what three, four times. Mm-hmm. So we have to, even it's though really he's, he is making it look easy. It's not that it's easy. He's mm. making it look easy. There's mm. a big difference. Mm. Um, I don't know if anybody has anything else. Predi- let's let's do predictions. Predictions, predictions. Mm. Who I, wins I, the I, game? I don't I don't like predictions for a game like this. First of all, you know, you can make six subs. They yeah, and, and I need to see the line of face. Ba- <laughs> no, they might play the okay, backup to yeah. Manchester City and Liverpool. For me, still for me, based, based on what we've seen preseason, I think Man City will win. Man City will I think win. Man City. Will. I think Liverpool are still figuring it. Yeah, uh, yeah, honestly, if mm. it, based on because if you are expecting Dan Nunes you know, to have a big role and like Daniel has said, he's still not there. It's not the game. It's not. It's not Man City is going to make his name. No Man City come to show us that he's a striker. It will take. You know, Man City is not the Matra Marquette. Exactly. Well, okay. I, I, I go with Man City. Yeah, not necessarily because of their quality. I think Liverpool walk into this, this uh, game with feeling the absence of key players, mm. and I think Alisson's absence. A lot of we don't talk about it. But Alisson is a very, very important part of what Liverpool do. Kalaha is also not around. Kalaha is not around. So, so it's Adrian Kalaha. who goes in post. And he doesn't really give off a lot of... A lot sure. of if it's, oh, I didn't know Adrian was in post. Like, I thought, oh, the man's the 3 <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
I don't. I, no comment. I don't want to say it. Any shout outs? Any shout outs? No, guys? we have to share the FPL code. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Charlie, how could I forget? So let me just quickly uh, share the fantasy league code for those of you who want to join City FM's fantasy league this season. Um, I have it here for you. So if you're ready, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> so the code is one mm. Q mm. as in small Q. Mm. So one small Q nine. Mm. M mm. B R sm- all small letters. So I'll go over it again. We have six characters in the code. Mm-hmm. One Q nine. M B R. All alphabets in there are in small letters. Yes. One Q nine M B R. One Q nine M B R. So one Q nine M B R. We posted on our our uh, social media platforms so you can uh, get a look at it because Charlie when the fantasy you could drop like this everybody Charlie, will be on your neck Charlie. Nathan fantasy you could, when you are sleeping no, when you are, oh my goodness so we've announced it now it will be on the City Sports GH Twitter handle we'll post we'll, it on we'll um, the City so the City Newsroom be on the handle lookout. as well just be on the lookout, lookout for it yes. so I'm sure we'll make it a pinned tweet or something of the mm-hmm. sort so uh, you won't have to come and back next week the it's Premier already, League is back man it's already in our mentions what's the PL yeah. code so, so what's going on is that the Premier League comes back next week Friday night we'll be launching the Premier League it's Arsenal Crystal Palace again Arco Nana let me let me let me let me let me the return of Arco Nana let me issue a disclaimer hey Charlie let me issue a disclaimer Charlie August 4 Nobody is looking forward to August 4 more than me. Hey, I'm telling you. Hey. When the all or nothing Arsenal documentary comes out. They've already released some snippets. That documentary would have slapped Charlie, alive they made the top four. No, 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 no. I think I, I think it will just show I don't I don't I don't think the, the outcome of last season really really matters. Mm. It's you get to see how Ateta runs his team. Mm. And I'm I'm really interested in that. Because if you remember from the beginning, I've always maintained management is not just tactics yep. from what he showed in his first few games you could clearly see in fact his first season where they won the FA Cup you could clearly see that tactically he's very sound he knows exactly what he's about mm-hmm. but the management that is managing players transfers ins outs all these things are to make you a complete manager and that's why I thought his problem was mm. and what I said was what would take an experienced person two years would take him four what would take an experienced person four years would take him eight so he's still learning and he's been learning on the job. But when I've the two videos I've seen, look, especially the team talk he gave. Yeah, yeah. Look. When when they, when they when they lost the, the first, first three games. games yeah. So what I did was that I watched the 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 video of the team talk. Then I went back to watch the highlights of that game <laughs> that they played. And you could tell that the body language was different. And that, you see, that is part of management. It's a different thing, you know. It's different. That is part of management. And I'm happy to see that clearly from, I've not watched the full thing. Nobody has watched the full thing. But from that video, you can tell that that is something that he's added. Because it clearly wasn't there before. If it was there and he was motivating and he wouldn't have been finished. Is he, he still doesn't change the fact that he's Ako Nana. No, he's, he'll forever be Ako Nana. Thank you very much. <laughs> forever. Oh, it's true. <laughs> Even a league champion, he'll still for, forever be Ako Nana. The name is there. Oh, yeah. Any shout outs, any quick shouts? Any quick oh, shouts before we, we go? I mean, it's been an interesting week for me. I've been having to visit Dr. Okain again, but shout outs. Yeah. How's, how's the dog doing? Lord oh, have Charlie, mercy. It's, not, it's, not, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, it's okay. Charlie, I don't, yourself. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want to hear this. But you know, I'll just give a shout out to the small and multi chain hospital. They are working very hard, Charlie. Who oh, erratic. Charlie, why are you coming to change the mood? Get <laughs> out. <laughs> Thank you guys I'm also very excited much. excited for the Premier League though. Yeah, I'm also excited don't about come it. in. I think uh-huh. I'm announcing. I'll believe in Man City, but I'll announce the team soon. Very soon. <laughs> Probably on squad. At, at this point, so you go to do review videos for your new teams. Because Daniel says, "Are you moving?" No, I'm not moving. I'm I'm still at my United, but I've added Juventus. Oh, of course. <laughs> Juventus. <laughs> have, they, they have meniscus issues to deal with. It doesn't matter. His soul is there, so I'm there. Ah, okay. Hard one. The Man City is too easy. I want a challenge. Thank. Nathan, ben, are you, ben, are you mo- support Ben? Ben, you are winning as we speak. Are you are you moving? No, no, no. I'm still here. You are staying put. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you are staying with Ten Hag. I want really to give a shout out. Trust the process. I want to give a shout out. Dan I want to give a shout out to Kalidu Kulibali. Oh, Charlie. Next season will be tough for you, my brother. <laughs> It's true. I'm not sure what he's talking we'll about. We'll see if you survive the Mosala test. Have you seen that video of Mosala dealing with him in Syria? Mm. <laughs> so proudly brought to us by Bell Beverages and Access Bank. 
and Access Bank say, Dear salaried workers, may I have your attention? I am excited to tell you that you don't need to wait for payday to get paid. You can get paid any day with the Access Bank payday loan offering by simply dialing star 901 star 11 hash. That's star 901 star 11 hash now. And with this unique offer, you can access up to 40% of your net monthly salary before payday to solve pressing needs and still have enough to enjoy on payday. This offer is open to all salaried workers. So if you want to enjoy this and more, switch your salary account to Access Bank today and get paid any day. Remember, it's simple. Just dial star 901 star 11 hash and get your loan in 60 seconds. No documentation required with Access Bank. Any day can be payday. Terms and conditions apply. For more information, you can call toll free on 0800-004400. That's 0800-004400. Or visit all our social media platforms or website. Access Bank, more than banking. So that's it from us here. At tonight, my name is Benjamin Inketia. You had Nathan Kwa, Susu Graham, and Daniel Cranting. Earlier on, we had Juliet Bewa. And also Tato Moeng of Super Sports. The show will be on SoundCloud and it will also be repeated tomorrow after the news at 12. So look out for that one until.